differentiate between healing and curing. Curing is the business of medicine. Curing has to do with eliminating symptoms. Healing is the business of the shaman. It's what we do in our training programs, what we train our students to do through our Healing the Light Body School. We're training Western shamans that are able to bring about healing, which is much more thorough than curing is, and that frequently results in curing as well, but does not always. For example, some of my best clients die, but they die peacefully. They die nearly pain-free. They die consciously. So healing has to do with an experience of infinity, with an experience of a self that exists outside of time, that can never experience illness, that has never been touched by disease. Whereas curing has to do with eliminating symptoms. And if you do not address the, the root, the cause, illness is simply going to return. My mission is to translate ancient sacred technologies into healing practices that are powerful and effective in a Western setting. And these are methodologies that have been in existence for 50,000 years. They've been proven effective. They've been transmitted through the oral tradition from teacher to student, from grandmother to granddaughter, grandfather to grandson. And my mission is to bring these methodologies to the West, is to train Western shamans is in the luminous healing practices of the Americas. And today we're training people from all cuts of life to learn to heal themselves, to learn to heal each other, and to learn to heal the world. And this is who the shaman is. We are caretakers of the earth. And my mission is to, is to train Western shamans that can dream a dream of healing and of peace and of beauty together. A healer always works within sacred space. And the notion that we work with and our premise is that we can create a personal sacred space by calling on the four corners of the world and on the organizing principles that each of these four corners represent. When we summon them, we create a space that is safe, which is an essential condition for healing to occur. Many of the clients that I work with personally are coming to see me because at an early stage in their life, the world ceased to be safe. And until we can create an energetic, safe space, a sacred space, healing is going to be very difficult. We do this by summoning on the four corners of the world, the four directions in heaven and earth. But then we work with creating a second kind of sacred space. The first one connects us to the ecosphere, to all of the forces of nature. The second kind of sacred space connects us to the Noah sphere, which is the distinctly human sphere, to the medicine men and women, to the luminous beings that assist us from the spirit world, the spiritual teachers, the angels, the luminous ones. And we have so much help available to us. But they cannot intervene directly in our world. Our world is too dense. So we have to create a microcosm, a micro-universe, where they can come and assist us in our healing processes. In fact, they end up doing so much of the work. Shamanism is an ancient spiritual and healing practice found throughout the Americas and throughout all traditional cultures in the world, in India, in Tibet, in Russia, in Central Europe, and practiced most actively today in the Americas. And the shaman is the individual who mediates between heaven and earth, between the visible and the invisible worlds. The shaman is the individual who dances on top of the equal sign 
in Einstein's famous equation E equals MC square. He dances between the world of energy and between the world of matter. The, um, the shaman is the one who uh, heals the seas, the one who propitiates the forces of nature, the one who is able to steer the village and the individual into a purposeful and healed and meaningful life. The shamans that I had the privilege of working with understood that we have a luminous energy field that surrounds the physical body and that informs the physical body, that organizes the physical body in the same way that the energy fields of a magnet will organize iron filings on a piece of glass. And that you had to intervene to heal the body at the level of the luminous energy field, at the level of the blueprint, that if you only intervened at the body through surgery or medication without clearing the blueprint, that whatever condition you were suffering from would re-express itself. The luminous energy field is shaped like a donut, which in geometry is the shape is known as a torus. And it's a donut with a very narrow hole in it. So if you can imagine a flux of energy coming up through our feet, through our bodies, out the very top of our head, and expanding the width of our outstretched arms and this energy flowing up through the feet up to the legs and down the outside of the body again and then up again and you rotate that 360 degrees you end up with a torus this is the shape of the luminous energy field when we're in nature when we're in a city this this donut of energy collapses and becomes very, very tight, like a cocoon, a very tight cocoon around the physical body. But when we're back in nature or in our natural states, it's very expansive. This luminous energy field is what contains the imprints of our early life experiences, of genetically inherited illnesses, even of memories before we were born, when we were still in the uterus and before. When we learn to perceive the luminous energy field, we learn to perceive the luminous nature of life. The visual spectrum, what the eye can see, is a very narrow band of the electromagnetic spectrum. Very, very small. Most of what's happening in the universe is happening outside of the visual spectrum. When we learn to perceive with our inner eyes, with the eyes that can perceive the luminous nature of life, we recognize our interconnectedness with all things, with the stars, with the rivers, with the mountains, with the valleys, with each other. The luminous energy field becomes toxic when we experience toxic emotions that we're not able to process or cleanse ourselves from effectively. They begin to build within our luminous field like sludge, pools of sludge that begin to weaken us, to debilitate us, to slow down the flow of the energy streams in our field, uh, to make us lethargic, to make us unconscious. An imprint is caused by trauma that is unhealed at the moment. So whenever we have trauma that we do not resolve and heal in the moment, it begins to organize energy in the form of a blueprint, if you want, of a fingerprint in the luminous energy field. It becomes encoded into our field. It has a charge that is not released in the moment and that as this charge is carried within 